So till now we have done a very deep and good discussion on uh, the basics of data handling, the recording of data and the organization of data that we uh, perform under data handling. The next topic that we have to discuss in data handling is tally marks. Now, these are some of the points that I have written here so that I don't miss an important point while discussing, while the discussion is going on. So, in tally marks, uh, the first point that I want to discuss is the unary numeral system and tally. Well, when it comes to unary numeral system, we know about the decimal numeral system or the Hindu Arabic numeral system, right? We know about the decimal numeral system. Decimal, that is the base 10 that we use normally, right? If we have to write number 101, then we write this number and we read this number according to this decimal numeral system that is of having base 10 and we are not going to discuss this. We are going to discuss a little about this unary numeral system. Unary numeral system. It's actually base 1 numeral system, base 1. In the decimal numeral system, we have base 10 and in this one, we have base 1. What it means, suppose you have any natural number n, any natural number n, okay? We have a natural number n. And if we have to represent this natural number n by using a unary numeral system, then what we will do is, we will take some arbitrarily, arbitrarily, symbol, arbitrarily symbol, okay, to denote this number n where the arbitrary symbol, the value of one symbol will be equal to 1, will be equal to 1, okay, suppose if you take this symbol, just imagine that you are taking this symbol, so if you are using this symbol in unidimensional system, the value of this particular symbol will be 1. Okay, so this is the meaning of unary numeral system that is base 1, that's the symbol that will be used in this numeral system, the uh, value of the symbol will be equal to 1, okay. So if you have to write this number n using any arbitrary symbol, then what you have to do is you will have to repeat that particular symbol n number of times this n times, n times. What does that mean? So let's suppose you have number 3 and it has to be represented by uh, some uh, symbol, this hash, let's suppose that. So if you have to represent this symbol then this will be represented as, right? Let's imagine, let's assume. So this is what number 3. And that is what unilateral system is about, that's base 1. You ch we have some, uh, you know, set symbols that we'll have to use and uh, the value of those symbols will be equal to 1. And in order to write any natural number n, you have to just repeat that number n times. Suppose that uh, someone uses only this uh, integer 1, this integer 1 to represent you know, some sets of natural numbers. Let's say you have to use this 1 to write 1. So how you will write this? Simply write 1. Okay. If you have to write 2, then 1 and 1. Okay. You have to write 3. So 1, 1, 1. You have to write 4. So 1, 1, 1 and 1. You have to write 5, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1, and so on, okay. It's, you know, a, an example of unary numeral system where, where you have represented these natural numbers using this integer 1, and when 
you have to write one, you just repeated this number only once. When you have to write two, you repeated this integer twice and then thrice and then four times and then five times. That is what unit neural system says. Okay, so it doesn't mean that this is one, uh, this is 11, this is 111, this is 1111, doesn't mean that. It simply means that if you are using this integer one under unit neural system to represent these natural numbers, then this will be one, this will be two, this will be three, this will be four, this will be five. Okay, so that is about uh, unary numeral system. Now, this unary numeral system is used in tallying, is used in tallying. Okay, it's used in tallying. And there are many symbols that are used for tallying. What this tallying means is that tallying is simply like a kind of, you know, counting, a kind of counting where you are uh, checking or you are writing down or noting the frequency or the number of occurrences of same data. We'll just discuss this thing in more detail. So we have discussed the uninumeral system and the tallying. Like I explained you that tallying is basically, uh, suppose that, uh, let's take an example, uh, what? Suppose they in a uh, in a field, okay, in a field, there are ten sheep, okay. You have or cows. There are ten cows, okay. So in the morning, you left them loose, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Let's say that these are cows. In the morning, you left them loose, and it's it's evening time, and you want them to go back into their shelter. So this is the gate, and here you are standing, okay. Here you are standing. And you have a slate, you have a slate, you have a slate. And what you are doing is, whenever one cow goes out of the field, you put a, this vertical uh, stroke. Then the second goes, you put another stroke. The third, another stroke. You repeat this until you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. When you see that you have actually made 10 counts, that is a repetition, that is a tallying. You are actually, for every one count, you have put a stroke, a vertical stroke. And that's what actually a tallying is, right? So this is the very basic of tallying. When we will discuss these points, this particular point of uh, you know, concern of tallying will get more clear to you. Now, notched sticks and tally, tally sticks. So notch sticks, also known as tally sticks, you know, these uh, uh, th these things date uh, date back to you know to ancient time, to ancient time, to ancient time or period, ancient time, ancient time. Okay, so. What scientists have found that they have found some the archaeological departments and all the they found some you know bones you, they found some bones which uh, were being used by you know in the ancient period when there was no numeral system they were not knowing how to write numbers or how to count properly okay so what they found is they found some bones even in some cases uh, you know rocks on rocks, on some small stones, even on, you know, some sticks, wooden sticks. And what they found is, there are some notches on that, right? This, uh, you know, vertical notches or strokes, you know, they would use some, like, maybe some using some another bone or some other pointed object. They were using to mark some notches on the bones or the rocks or the stones or the sticks. Okay, so these notches were actually telling them the count, or even they were using them to store some messages, right? For counting, for some message, or I mean, for several purposes, these uh, techniques were being used in the ancient period. So this is where the history of you know this. Uh, uh, Tally marks originate. So, uh, like uh, we saw example of in a field there are cows or let's say goats or sheep. 
So if they, they, have, they had to count, they would use the same concept like for each car, they would put a vertical uh, stroke or, or notch on the bones or on the sticks or the uh, stones and on the rocks. So for each one notch or the stroke, right? So this represents one count. The another would be another one. The another would be another one. And at that time, they were not knowing about these, you know, number one, number two, number three, number four, because they were not aware of all these things. And these things were not, you know, uh, discovered at that time that how can we uh, express the numbers? How can we write the numbers? How can we tell the numbers? So this is a little brief history of, you know, of uh, 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 notched sticks and tally sticks. You can go on Google, Google and you can, you know, search all these things. So, after unit numeral system and tallying, notched sticks and tally sticks. So, these are basically what these are telling, um, or they are tallying actually the count. They are telling the repetition of one particular thing. If it's a cow, or it's a goat or anything, or they have to, you know, count thing, they will put a notch and each notch will be a count. The third point is tally marks and, and its clustering, reason behind it. Okay. So after discussing all these points, you know, you know what actually tallying is, right? So you have a better uh, understanding of tally. What we have to discuss here is tally marks and its clustering and the reason behind it. So there are actually, you know, various ways to write, to use the tally marks. What we are going to use for our, you know, course is, or for our standard is, you know, we will use this, uh, these tally marks like a stroke like a stroke okay so this will be our tally mark this will be our tally mark and there are various ways to write the tally marks and i'll show you them, some of them i'll show you shortly so this is a you know a stroke a tally mark and it can be a vertical and even in some cases you will find some horizontal as well. So it's not necessary that some people say that it's a vertical line. What you will say it is actually a you know vertical stroke. Okay, we call it is a vertical stroke. Or even in layman terms, you can say that vertical line. Okay, this is a vertical stroke and there's horizontal stroke in a tally marks horizontal stroke of telemark. Okay, so let's suppose that, uh, what can we take? We have to take number 10, right? For number 10, you have to uh, write or represent number 10 using the, this telemark. So let's say that we do like this. We simply, let me copy it. So, and we'll see. Let me copy it again. So this is one, and another one, two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven. Then eight, then nine, and then ten. Okay. Let's suppose that we have uh, represented number ten, the natural number number ten, using these tally mark, this tally mark, and we have to write this tally mark ten times, right? Because we have to represent. That's what unit, un, unary numeral numeral system says. Now let's suppose that you have to write actually number twenty three. You have to write number 23. So 23. So in that case, what you will do? You will write this 23 times, right? So let me make it. This is let's see what will be. This is 10. This is another 10. So we have 20. And then let's see what it will be. Sorry.
So here we have 23. Okay. Now, suppose that what you are doing is uh, you have actually represented this number 10 and using this tally mark and writing 10 times, this 23 times. Suppose you were not knowing that this is actually number 10 and number 23. You were not knowing this. And suppose if you have to write this tally mark representation in a number, natural number. So if you are counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. Okay. Maybe this was easy one. But if you are counting here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Why don't you just pause and try to count this? I am. I bet that after some point you will get confused. Okay, or you will be having uh, like where you were at the at what position you were, uh, so that you can move further. So the point is that it's not easy. Like this is twenty three. So it's not easy to count each vertical strokes. Right? You can get confused uh, on that uh, about a number or your previous position. So what you can do is you can like if this is number 10 so this was easier but if this is like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 see again 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and if i control c and control v e, sorry c One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Here, control X, V. Okay. And then control. So I have just split these. Uh, this. 23 one into three parts like just to explain you this was for number 10 this was for number 10 and this is for number 23 in this case we have you know made a set of 10 and then another set of 10 so this represents 10 this represents 10 and this represents 3 so 10 plus 10 20 uh, plus 3 so what I'm trying to uh, uh, tell you is there can be a possibility that you can group these this tally mark repeated 10 times as one group so that anyone can see that and can tell that okay this is 10 this is another 10 and this is 3 uh, because 1 2 and 3 but suppose that if you have number 9 okay if you have number 9 if you have number 9 so what you have to do is you'll have to write this vertical tally mark, the, uh, the vertical stroke tally mark nine times, right? So this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, anyone can, you know, uh, it's not very convenient for us to group this tally mark uh, in a set of 10, right? That is 10 vertical strokes making one set of 10. That is the clustering. We don't do their clustering in a set of 10. We don't do it in a set of 10. Why? Because you can see that if it is a set of 10, we can we can tell in this case, we can tell in this case, but when it comes to 9, then again we'll have to count. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And it's not very convenient. For the convenience point of view, whenever typically, typically when we cluster, when we cluster, we cluster it in, you know, uh, in a number of five. That is, five tally marks will make, sorry, five tally marks will make one cluster, but here's the case. Like, in this case, we have one, two, three, four. The fifth tally mark will be the diagonal one. The fifth de uh, tally mark will be the diagonal one. How? Oh, I'll show you here. So. If this is one, one, two, three, four, five, okay. one, two, three, four. So control C, control V, we have here one, two, three, four, and then 
this is five okay so when what in our practice what we will use for our problems is that the tally mark this vertical stroke this vertical stroke will be grouped in a set of 10 lines a, a single set will be of sorry of five in which four will be vertical strokes and the fifth one one two three four and the fifth count will be this you know uh, diagonal uh, diagonal uh, vertical stroke sorry this diagonal line how suppose that you are counting uh, number 23 so then how you will do this let me remove all this or let me do it here so if you have to write number 23 how you will do this this is 5 right so 23 will be like this One, two, three, four, and five. Sorry, four, and the fifth line will be in this way. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. So you have five plus five, ten plus 5, 15, plus 5, 20, and then 1, 2, and 3. This will tell you 23, okay? My point is, why do we cluster in 5, okay? We cluster this vertical mark, uh, the cluster, we cluster this tally mark in 5 is just to, uh, for the convenience of our calculation so that you don't get confused. Like, if it was not given to you, right? If it was not given to you that this represent 10 and this represent 23 and then in case if you have to count then even if you know that this is a way our tally mark system uh, has a clustering of 10 but you can do it wrong because if this was number 9 maybe you can count it wrongly and maybe you can tell okay this is 10 but in fact this was number 9 but if we cluster in the form of 5 like in this way if we cluster it in the form of number 5 it reduces our time for calculation and it is very convenient for us to write and to tell what actually this uh, tally mark representation tells us. So in case if you have to write uh, say number 19, if you have to write number 19 then how you will do this number 19. So for number 19, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, and 1, 2, 3, and 4. So 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 5 is 15, plus 4 is 19. And that is a way to, you know, cluster tally mark in, uh, in clustering of tally mark in 5. And the fifth slash is this diagonal one. And for 4, you ha we have written separate tally mark lines, okay? So if you are wondering that, where do we use this, uh, the concept of tally mark? You know, there are many, uh, 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 you know fields where this is used even you can take an example like uh, you are you have to collect some data for a sports event okay uh, this particular thing that how we use in table or in the list and all uh, regarding this tally mark i'll make a separate video but but just to tell you that uh, suppose you are in a classroom and if you have to collect data of let's say 100 students for some sports event and in a sport event, uh, you have events like several races, like 100 meter race, 200 meter race, 300 meter race, then 400, let's one kilometer, then four kilometer uh, marathon, and then mini marathon and all, and then short, uh, short birds and high jump and all. So for every 100 students, you have to, you, there are several events, and for each event, you have to take the count. So there you can use this, you know, uh, the concept of tally mark like if you are going to each student and asking hey mr. a let's say uh, uh, mr. a what which event do you want to take part so mr. a will say that I want to take part in this event the second event that is 100 meter race so you'll put one you then move to mr. B mr. B says I want to take part in this event so just just imagine that you're moving from one student to another or you ha you are sitting at one place and you have called students to your you know to table or whatever center that is and their students are telling you that which event they want to take part in and you are simply putting this notch or 
this tally mark. So suppose two students tell that they want to take part in this event, then three and then four, you simply put five, then one, two, three, four, and again five. So five students plus five students, that means 10 students. So this will be very easier for you because if you look at this notation or the representation of tally mark, you can quickly tell, hey, this is five. This is another five. And in case if there's not a five representation, you can, you can quickly tell it, okay, we don't have any diagonal line here. You, we don't have a diagonal uh, uh, tally mark. That means it's not five and it's less than five. And you can very easily calculate it. Okay, one, two, three, and four. But imagine had it been the case of 10, then you'll have to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, right? So that's a you know, uh, benefit of clustering uh, tally marks and five, and then this diagonal uh, uh, representation of tally mark tells you that this is actually clustering five tells you of five, uh, that is, one set, this is another set, okay? So this is one of the uses, one of the many uses of telemarks. The last point that I want to discuss is some different forms of clustering. So as we have seen here, we saw here that we do clustering of five. It could have been 10, but it can create confusion. But this is not the only one a way that is being followed in the whole world. There are many different countries which follow their own, you know, way of uh, using these tally marks. And this is two examples that I'm showing to you here. These are two examples. So to cluster the number eight, right? This uh, this can be, you know, done like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can see that this tally mark that is a vertical stroke has been written eight times that represents the cluster eight. They can be a different way. This way, that is one, two, three, four, and five. If you remember in our this discussion, the fifth tally mark was always put in a diagonal way. But in this case, we haven't put it in a diagonal way. It's one, two, three, four, and five, then one, two, and three. Is it being followed somewhere? Of course, it is being followed somewhere. And this information I have taken from, you know, uh, Wikipedia. Now the, look at this one. In this case, what it's telling you, it is for same number eight, the clustering tells you that the first line, like in this case, you can see one, two, three, four, and five, but the first vertical mark is making some angle, like it's making some angle and it's not a vertical stroke. This, is, this stroke is making actually some angle. So in this case, it's the first one. And even in this case, like it's representing five and it's representing three. So five plus three is eight. But you can see that even in this case, it's a grouping of five actually. But the first mark, the first stroke is always making some vertical. So it was five. So first stroke is, what is making some angle. This is three, but first stroke is making some angle. So in this case, you have again, you have set of five, that is one, two, three, four, and five. So what we saw here was the diagonal one, the fifth stroke was diagonal. In this case, the tally mark, the fifth stroke is horizontal. The fifth one is a horizontal. In this case, the grouping of five, the first stroke was making some angle. In this case, the fifth stroke is, is horizontal. Here it was first, in this case, it's fifth, Tally mark is horizontal. And then again, one, two, and three. This is what we have discussed. This is a diagonal one, right? One, two, three, four, and the fifth one. So what, in this case, there was no clustering. It was simply written as, you know, repetition of one tally mark eight times. In this case, yes, we have clustered five times. Okay, we have clustered uh, the tally mark into five, but here the fifth, stroke was the same vertical stroke. In this case, the fifth stroke is the same, but the first stroke is making some angle. In this case, yes, it is a clustering of five, but the fifth stroke is horizontal. In this case, the fifth stroke is diagonal, and we have discussed it in detail. This is a Chinese character's tally, and what it's telling is this horizontal tally 
you know mark or horizontal stroke is representing number one this horizontal and a vertical stroke is representing number two this is representing number three this is representing number four and this is representing number five same tally mark you can see that right this tally mark here and this tally mark here they all are same but to represent tally marks is to write them is different from what we have discussed here what we discussed here and this is something entirely different there are many other representation of tally marks okay so these are some of the examples of tally mark representation what is the purpose the purpose is same that to count like in this case this is, these all are representing some numbers one two three four and five right so these are representing some numbers and so this is all about you know um, tally marks that we wanted to discuss so it was a kind of you know theoretical portion of tally marks that what's a little bit of history why do we use it why don't we cluster in 10 and why we prefer clustering in 5 and some different forms of clustering in the next video that will be a series of this uh, video only uh, that is on tally marks we will discuss about uses of uh, tally mark in frequency distribution table okay when we uh, record data and arrange them properly, organize them properly in a table form that is a frequency distribution table and there we will see that how we use telemarks.